Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm the Director of Digital Ministries at Watermark Church in Dallas, Texas. I'm here with our Pastor Todd Wagner. Hello, Rick. And we got a lot to cover, so I'm going to go right to it. The question is, how do I know that I have the Holy Spirit in me? All right, now listen, this is a question of which I have no small amount of passion because I see so much confusion and, frankly, destruction and devastation throughout the body of Christ. This question came from somebody who wrote us, and they were asking this because uh, they said they go some places and people say, hey man, if you got the Holy Spirit, you'll do X, Y, and Z, all right? You'll be slain in the Spirit, you'll speak in tongues, you'll have holy laughter, a, a whole series of things. Let me just tell you, this is one that the Bible is very clear on, okay? In Galatians chapter 5, it says, this is the sign of not being marked by the Spirit, and it lists all kinds of things that are devastating to an individual and to a collective society. And then when you get to verse 22 of Galatians 5, it says, but the fruit, and it's key, because a lot of times we call it the fruits, like plural, but it's clearly the fruit. When the Holy Spirit of God is present, you will see not ecstatic behavior, but you will see, in fact, self-control. You don't lose control of yourself, okay? You see love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's what you see. The evidence of being filled with the Spirit is not that you speak in some language you don't understand. It's controlling the tongue that you do have. James chapter 3 says that uh, if you can't control your tongue, right, there's evidence there that something's going on that is not uh, the presence of God. Okay, now look, we're going to do a whole other real truth real quick at some point in some miraculous way inside five minutes that deals with what is speaking in tongues biblically. Yes. But let me just tell you that Ephesians chapter 5, just like Galatians 5 talks about this, Ephesians 5, verse 18 and following says this. It says, don't be drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. In other words, it makes you less than the man or woman that you should be. We don't think people who drink wine are better drivers. They're not better dads, not better mothers, not better employers or employees. And so don't be filled with these things that come from spirit shops. That's why we call them spirit shops. Because when you drink, it changes who you are. So it says, don't be drunk with wine, for that's dissipation. But it says, okay, be filled with the Spirit. Now listen, when I teach on this, we've done some series that we'll link to in the bottom of this. Be filled, not fooled. Okay, or the low down on filling up or two of the series. We talk about what that word means to be filled, and it can mean a lot of things. It can mean something empty has something put in it, or it can mean to be controlled by. That's the way that it's used here. It's uh, used in the scripture of a sail that's filled with wind, okay, uh, or carried along. Um, when you are controlled by something, like a person is filled with rage. We don't think he drank a cup of rage. That guy is filled with lust. What we're saying there is he's being controlled by this thing called lust, which is not the Holy Spirit. Now, what's interesting, you can know when you're being controlled by the Holy Spirit, when the fruit, in other words, when the Spirit of God is there, you're patient. When the Spirit of God is there, you're loving. So you don't even need to pray for patience. You just need to say, as a person who acknowledges a separation from God and that that separation is closed uh, by grace through faith and your dependence upon Jesus Christ as you're reconciled to God and you acknowledge that he is good, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And when you yield to that spirit and don't quench the spirit or grieve the spirit, then the spirit will be operative in your life. And you will be those things that the spirit of God is. That will be manifest in your life. Ephesians 5 gives you three things that will happen when the Holy Spirit of God is in relationship with you. Okay, It says it will change the way you speak. Here we go again. You'll speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. It changes the way you speak. It isn't you speak in a way that you don't understand. It means you control the tongue you have. Secondly, it says you will have, uh, you'll be filled with thanksgiving. You'll be uh, grateful because uh, you know what God has done. You know who he is. You understand evil in the world. You understand that all things work together for good to those that are love God and are called according to his purposes. So in everything you say, God, I know you're at work and I know you're good. And the third thing it says in verse 21 is you're subject to one another in love. Which, man, Ephesians 5, that's where we get into the whole things women submit to your husbands. But, man, read the whole context. Spirit-filled people in a relationship speak to one another in a loving way, in a way that praises God and builds each other's up. They have a thankfulness towards God and one another, and they're subject to one another. So here's how you know you're marked by the Holy Spirit of God, Rick. Uh, you bear fruit. 
that spirit, the scripture says, comes into your life the moment you believe. In 1 Corinthians 12, it makes it clear. There's a lot of confusion about this because the book of Acts is describing what happened in the early church. It is not prescriptive, it is descriptive. It is not normative, okay? It's not normal for what happens. It's describing what happens. So um, there's a lot of confusion out there. By the way, one last thing on this. The reason I think there's so much vulnerability in people is most folks, too many people are involved with a dead church. They don't see the power of God. They don't see life change. When the Spirit of God is there, things change. Okay, the old is gone, new things have come. And when you get around churches that are ritualistic, okay, and not living in deep intimacy with God, you'll see them either move to ecstatic, crazy expressions of the Spirit of God, or you'll see them move towards intellectualism, okay, and so they become desperate for some evidence of the Spirit. And a healthy church that makes disciples, where the Spirit bears out in people's life and transformed Spirit. Uh, loving joy, then you're not going to look for that kind of craziness. So the way you know that the Spirit of God is there, it changes the tongue you've got, it changes the relationships you've got, and it changes your attitude. Yeah. So in other words, the, the proof of the Holy Spirit is a changed life. Transform life. life. Well, hey, we know there's a lot of information out here uh, and a lot of different uh, opinions. And so in the, in the comments below, leave your comments. We'll jump in and dialogue with you there as well. And we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Crucible Quick.